What's going on boys and girls, what's up world? Austin John Plays here and today I'm going to be going over how you can get and evolve every single Golarian variant Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield. <laughs> Welcome to Galar, again, or Galar, whatever. There are a lot of Galarian Pokemon in this game that are variants or regional evolutions of Pokemon that we've seen in the past. Mainly, Meowth, Ponyta, Farfetch'd, Weezing, Mr. Mime, Corsola, Zigzagoon's Line, Darumaka, and Yamask. Two of these Pokemon are exclusive to Sword, two of these Pokemon are exclusive to Shield. I'm going to be going over all the details on you getting them and evolving them. The bottom of the screen is going to have the Pokemon that I'm going over, so if there's something you're looking for, just search by it. We don't do timestamps because timestamps hurt a video. Thanks, fam. Alright, so first of all, one of the weirdest things. Here in the Galarian Pokedex, we have an entry for Meowth, Meowth's Evolution Perserker, and also an entry for Persian, which can only be obtained from a Cantonian Meowth. Meowth can only be obtained here on Route 4, any weather condition, and it's going to appear in the overworld. It's going to be a 23% encounter rate in the overworld and a 35% encounter rate in the grass. By the way, shout out to Cerebi.net for compiling all this information. Joe Merrick is on top of it. He is truly a saint when it comes to Pokemon data. Uh, put it in that work. Oh, there's one right there. You know, these Electric make uh, hunting down the Pokemon you want a little hard sometimes. We're gonna just do some quick balls. I got 56 of them. We're flying through this video. Here is Galarian Meowth. If you want to evolve it to Perserker, all you need to do is level it up to level 28. However, right here at Route 7, Perserker is very common in the overworld at a 30% encounter rate. There's a good chance I could just walk up here and find one. Oh, it found me. I really am a fan of what they did with Meowth and Perserker in this game, making them kind of look like Vikings. Definitely a cool design. They are pure steel type, which is really nice to have for the team, especially before you go into the fairy gym. Now, in order to get ourselves Persian, we need to take our Galarian Meowth and trade it for a Cantonian Meowth. And this seems really weird that I'm making this video on regional evolutions and I'm definitely going over, you know, here's this non-regional evolution. But it's in the Pokedex and you need to fill your Pokedex, you gotta catch them all, or at least the 400 present in this game. Now it is worth mentioning that around release time until, I believe it's January 15th or so, maybe January 11th, let's just say early January, you can get your hands on a Gigantamax Meowth, however, that Meowth is not allowed to evolve. It can be bred down for more Cantonian Meowths, but that's it. And I'm just gonna give you candies. If Cantonian Meowth reaches level 28, it's going to evolve into Cantonian Persian. Nice. Next is going to be for Galarian Ponyta. Galarian Ponyta is found in the Glimwood Tangle. That's the place that we watched a 24 hour video of so that we can learn about Ponyta. Now the weird part here about the Glimwood Tangle is that there is an encounter table for the overworld, and an encounter table for In the Grass. Meanwhile, I don't think there's any Pokemon in the overworld. Oh, wow, okay, that's an Orangaroo. I think that's like a 5% spawn. Oh, I'm sorry, that's 4%. Really, another one? Sinistee has a unique special form only available rarely in the wild. The standard forms are considered forgery, but very rarely a real one can be found. How do you have any idea if it's a real one or a forgery? Do you just supposed to catch them all and wait till the Pokedex updates? Wait, I got the different Pokedex entry. Did I just catch the 1% rare Sinistee? Is there any way to actually find out? Ah, there we go. There's my little pony. You ever notice this area has like a CRT filter sort of look to it? Ooh, critical catch. Nice. Galarian Rapidash cannot be caught in the wild. Instead, Galarian Ponyta needs to hit level 40 in order for it to evolve. I took two large candies and boom, here we are. If you're at all curious on why I have so many candies, I've done so many raid battles. Now, Galarian Weezing can be captured in the Slumbering Wield during the higher up areas, but since it is story related, I actually don't want to show you that area. It's found there regularly, so once you're at that point in the game that it prompts you to go to the Slumbering Wield, you'll find them. In addition, here at the Lake of Outrage, if it's overcast, there's an increase in poison type Pokemon, and you can find it there. And there's usually one right outside of Monostoke. There it is. 
Now you can get yourself a coughing or import a coughing at a later point in time after Pokemon Home. He just turned away from me. For coughing to evolve, it just needs to hit level 35. So if you want to catch yourself a shiny coughing in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu or Eevee, do not evolve it into Weezing and then import it once Home comes out. You can have yourself a shiny Galarian Weezing. This one is level 65, which does mean you need to have eight badges complete in order to catch this strong looking Pokemon. I love fastballs. As far as Mime Jr., Galarian Mr. Mime, and Galarian Mr. Mime's regional evolution, Mr. Rhyme, Mime Jr. can only be found rarely in one star and I believe also two star raid battles. I caught myself a Mime Jr. in a raid. It was level 15. I was doing a lot of date spoofing for raid battles, as you can tell, because I did that uh, a year ago. Now, Galarian Mr. Mime can be found on Route 10 extremely commonly in the overworld, a 30% encounter rate here on Route 10. Here they are. By the way, it no longer is a mime. Now it does tap dancing. That's what it does. Ooh, critical capture. Oh no. I'm gonna hit you with that disrespect great ball now. If you do catch yourself a Mime Junior, it needs to learn Mimic, which is at level 32, and then it can evolve into Galarian Mr. Mime while in Galar. For Mr. Mime to evolve into Mr. Rhyme, it just needs to be at level 42. It could also be found in some max raid battles, apparently. And here we go, Mr. Rhyme. Just when you thought you couldn't hate Mr. Mime anymore. When it comes to Galarian Zigzagoon, it's really not hard to come by. On Route 3, they have a 40% chance to appear, and there's one right there. Galarian Zigzagoon evolves into Galarian Lanoon at level 20. And if you want to catch a Galarian Lanoon, you totally can. You just come here to Bridgefield. Oh, there's more Zigzagoon. There's a Lanoon. Galarian Lanoon evolves into Galarian Obstagoon, or just Obstagoon, at level 35 only at nighttime. However, Obstagoon is a rare spawn next to the breeder here in the wild area. There it is. Boop which is kind of messed up because aren't these based on like raccoons or tanukis or badgers or something and I'm pretty sure they eat their young and this one is just kind of hanging out right outside of a daycare where babies are made all the time. So is this thing just like feasting on children? I mean, look at that tongue and those teeth. I wouldn't be surprised. God, I love quick balls. When it comes to Galarian Corsola, it can only be found here at the Giant's Mirror and only during overcast conditions and then only a 5% chance for it to pop up in the overworld. Now, there is a method to spam and change the weather in this game. It's sort of a double-edged sword because if you change your date, it kind of resets the max raid battles. It requires a full 24 real hours of your date not being changed in order for max raid battles to start popping up regularly. Meanwhile, you just do that and the weather changes. And ta-da, now it's overcast. Magically like that, right? Now, Galarian Corsola is very short. In the overworld, it'll just look like a dead rock right here. And a quick ball and a catch. Ooh, it popped out. Oh, it's a ghost type. I can't false swipe it. Dive ball did the trick. It wasn't supposed to because we're not on water, but whatever. Now for Galarian Corsola to evolve into Cursula, it just needs to be level 38 or higher. So I'm gonna give this two candies and it's, it's pretty creepy. Not gonna lie. Cursula. Pure ghost type. Next is Galarian Yamask, which is located right here at Route 6. It appears in the overworld 35%. It's not very rare. You have probably stumbled across this and had no idea how to evolve it. Heck, you may be watching this video, How to Evolve Yamask. There's one. I'm really happy that while I climbed the ladder, it stayed still. Like, why would you not want it to stay still? Now, Yamask has one of the weirdest evolution methods that I have ever seen. It has to have exactly 49 damage or more in order for it to evolve. My Pokemon needs to be at 21 HP or less. Yes, no crit. Perfect. Yamask is now below 21 health, which means that it has 49 damage or greater. I'm going to flee this battle now. And then we need to go to the Dusty Bowl to this rune, the Stonehenge looking thing right there. Now, even though this is a weird evolution method, it's actually not the hardest one to do on this list. All right, so you see, 
that Stonehenge looking thing right there, we just need to go under it with your mask having 49 damage. <laughs> Can't make this up. <laughs> Can't make this up. And there we go, there is Runarigus. Hi there, it's Austin from the future. I just put out on Twitter because I wasn't able to find this and it wasn't listed on Cerebi. Apparently, if you make your way into the fairy gym, you can speak with this young child who wants a Galarian Yamask and is going to trade you a Unovian Yamask. And there we go, that's how you get yourself a Unovian Yamask. Now, this Unovian Yamask, all it needs to do is be level 36 and then it's going to evolve. And once it's level 36, you can then evolve it into Cofagrigius. I've never actually said this Pokemon's name out loud. Cofagrigius? Wh whatever this is. But anyways, you need this for your Pokedex, just like how you need Cantonian Persian. Oh damn, I just broke 900,000 subs. You guys are amazing, thank you. If you're watching this video and it came up recommended in your feed and you're part of the more than 60% of the people who watch my videos but are not subscribed, why not? YouTube may have just unsubscribed you, you didn't even realize it. So do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. We're hopefully trying to hit a mil by the end of the year. If not, it's okay, but I appreciate you. And you hitting the subscribe button lets me know that you appreciate me. Anyways, I really seriously doubt you need me to tell you where Stunfisk is, Galarian Stunfisk, because soon as you leave the second gym, the water gym, and you're in the mine, you come across these bear traps on the ground everywhere. Like there. That's... That's him. It's in a few places, but like, they're placed. And they're really, really hard to miss. I don't mean like avoid because they're a trap. I mean like, it's hard for you to not realize it's there. And now for the regional Galarian Pokemon that are only available in Pokemon Sword. First is Galarian Farfetch'd. We're gonna make our way to the Route 5 Nursery. Here at the Route 5 Nursery, Galarian Farfetch'd has a 5% chance to spawn in the overworld. Ah, here we go. Here's the Farfetch'd. Now the thing about Farfetch'd is that it has a 50% chance for it to be holding a leak when you encounter it. It needs to be holding that leak. So essentially you're just going to be here catching Farfetch'd until you catch one that has a leak on it. You're not holding a leak. Ugh. I do want to point out that a leak is different from a large leak. That is not the item we're talking about. We're talking about the leak item that falls under the other items category where you see leak. It would be like right around here. I should have like known that that Farfetch did not have a leak because out of all the attacks it did to me, it did not once get a critical hit. And the leak increases the critical hit ratio of Farfetch'd. Oh, see that? That was a critical hit. It has a leak. It has a leak. And as we can see, this Farfetch'd right here is holding a leak. That's exactly what we wanted. Now, in order for Farfetch'd to evolve into Surfetch'd, it has to achieve three kick critical hits in the same battle. If he's on your team and he's holding a leak and he got three crits, you probably have no idea how he actually evolved. However, if you're just to the point that you're trying to fill up your Pokedex and you've knocked out a lot of the trainers and you don't know of any Pokemon that could take three hits. That's the reason I went and I found this very low level Farfetch'd and I found a level 60 Metapod and Metapod has no attacking moves. So I'm gonna do Fury Cutter until I can land three critical hits and then I'm going to knock it out. There's one, there's two, was that three? Three, great, we just achieved three critical hits in the same battle. I'm gonna swap out now. Great, he achieved three critical hits in the same battle and he gained some levels. I don't know if he has to gain levels. Maybe, if you're following this method, it's gonna work. Boom, Farfetch'd is evolving. There we go, there's Surfetch'd. Goes from an ugly black duckling to a beautiful white swan, which is also a duck. Okay, and for the second Pokemon Sword exclusive is going to be on route number 10. There is a 5% chance in the grass we are gonna come across Galarian Darumaka. So we need to go for the exclamation marks and not the wild encounters. Which, fun fact, if you're playing Pokemon Shield and not Pokemon Sword, this is the place that you find Ice Q. The penguin with the giant ice cube on its head with a 2% encounter rate only in the exclamation marks, random in the grass, not in the overworld. What do I want for dinner? Papa John's, Papa Bless. Two hours later. Oh, 
there it is. All right. My camera battery died. Quick ball on the boy. Nice. Now, Galarian Darumaka just needs an ice stone for it to evolve into Galarian Darmantian. And there we go. Look at that big snowman boy. Uh, I got gorilla tactics instead of Zen mode. When it has Zen mode in its Zen form, it's, it turns into a fire ice Pokemon and it looks like a little flamethrower snowman. We get an image on screen of what Zen mode looks like, future Austin. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Every single Golarian form and exclude and Cantonian Persian as well in Pokemon Sword and Shield and their evolutions, how to get them and how to get wild encounters and wild catches as well. This video took <laughs> quite a while to record. I'm on almost hour number two right here. So guys, if you learned something new, if you found this video useful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. It really helps out the video and lets me know that you appreciate the work I put into these videos. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications until next time. Austin John out.